stuff. Hold well on, everybody. So this is Sean. Welcome, Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi. Hi. I didn't realise I was going to be sitting on a. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys, but hi, everybody. You all, you all feeling good? Yes. yes. Yeah. Feeling lively. I know it's towards the end of the day, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk to Sean. We're going to really dive into the business journey and understand, you know, her journey what it's been like and her story, you know, to try and share some lessons and of course we're going to open up a bit of Q&A to end off with. So I just want to start off, Sean, do you want to tell everybody a bit about your background, a bit about you, prior to you winning The Apprentice or doing these deals that you're doing now and things happening for you, where did we start off? What was the... Uh... Yes, so it's interesting because a lot of people will know me from The Apprentice and my story from The Apprentice, but my business was set up a few years before that. Uh, very, very, very small scale. I am from a Leeds Northern background, if you can't tell from a very strong accent. Uh, very working class uh, upbringing, you know, we, uh, we did all right, but I didn't have big pots of money to start a business. That was never the plan, that was never you know, how it began. Um, I studied fashion at uni, I enjoyed it, and I decided I wanted to set something up from that. Um, so my actual business journey began with Instagram. I set up an Instagram page, which was a personal page, and I just used to post pictures of things I've made. And when I say made, I mean literally made on a sewing machine at home. Um, and it just started to get traction. And I started to think, okay, I could probably make a little bit of cash from this. So I was working full time, and this little Instagram page started getting a following, and it was back when Instagram was organic, you didn't have to pay. Um, and you know, the following grew, 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 and, uh, and it went from just this little Instagram page to a business. I had celebrities wearing products, we had Kate Wright was one of the first girls who wore a range of our bikinis on holiday, and it was from there that I was like, okay, this is not just a little sideline anymore, like I needed a website, you know, I need all the key things you need to set a business up. I didn't have any money really still, we'd made a little bit of profit, but I wasn't paying myself anything, I was retaining everything working full time, so you know, my, my days were 5 a.m. start, so on a sewing machine, poor boyfriend just being woke up every morning by a sewing machine. <laughs> Go to work for nine o'clock, get to the post office, spend my lunch at the post office pretty much every day, and then come home, check for my new orders, get them ready for the morning, and that was Groundhog Day for literally a year, or two years. Um, so yeah, I've got my story began very small scale, and then I went through all the processes of setting up the business with no funding. Um, so then applying for the apprentice, just as a massive fan, I get to the show initially, uh, had with no idea or expectation of even getting through to any auditions. Uh, and then I remember getting to the first audition, and I arrived and it was just full of men with briefcases and suits on. And I, just, <laughs> I had my dress on, my heels, and I thought, I've got no chance. And I thought, this, literally, I'm the odd one out in this crew. And, um, and I just kept getting through. And I was like, I kept coming out saying to my mum, they're going to kick me out next time. Like, I'm not sure why I'm still getting through. And then they rang me and said, we want you on the show. We, we really like, you know, we, we think you're a great business person. And, da, da, da. and I was just like, wow. Because I was thinking, no matter where I get to. Like, so before we jump into that, Sean, yeah. I want to just go back to that Groundhog Day if we can. Yes. How many feel like you're Groundhog Day yourselves a little bit sometimes? Mm. Quite a few people in the room, absolutely, <laughs> right? And obviously you, you've, you've had some life-changing moments that change your results dramatically, and you created those, mm. and I think that's an important thing to remember, right? If it's meant to be, it's up to me, right? You've got to create these moments, you've got to make these decisions, take these opportunities. Because it'd be quite easy for you not to apply to go on that show. It'd be quite easy when they said, I want you on that show, not to go on it, right? But then talk to me about the Groundhog Day aspect, just quickly. What kept you going for two years following that model? Did you ever want to quit? Yeah. Did you ever think this is not going to work? No, Did no, you? Never. I, I, do you know what? I think. Love that. That's good. As a, and I can't even say I was a businesswoman then, really. I, was, I had a passion and I, and I absolutely loved what I was doing. My full time job, I didn't feel so passionately about and I used to go there every day thinking I do not really want to be here this is just paying my bills and I'd come home I'd be tired but I'd be sewing or I'd be doing my bits and I'd love it and to see the growth the you know, small growth that we'd see every week or every I'd say we it was me you know I, I loved that and that's what kept me going it was did the small growth ever leave you frustrated 
Did you want more? Were you like, is this going to go faster? Is this get? How many of you felt like that? Do you want it to go quicker or faster? Anyone in the room? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Did you ever feel like that? I probably did when I initially not really because it was so organic that it was like every step was like, oh wow, okay, I can make money from this, and okay, how can I make more money? But there was definitely a point where I was like, okay, it, for me because I work full time, I got to a point where I thought I need to really leave my job now. But it was that really scary thought of then I have to this has to work, this has to make me money, it has to cover my bills, then it becomes very, very serious. So I definitely had moments of thinking, like, I need to progress and I need to keep this. I think my scariest part was thinking, will this continue to, to grow or is it just going to pause? And But it does, you know, and I think the more time and effort that I especially was putting into it, and the more that I was looking at the market and working it out and understanding and learning about business myself and networking with people and being at events it, it helped me to continue to grow i guess definitely especially during the early days absolutely so in terms of those early days you get through that period you work and did you quit your job did you get to that point no, I, didn't. I, I, I was i was on the brink and then i applied for the apprentice and obviously the apprentice pretty much so when you applied for that and you're going and you're in a room with people and you're feeling like you said you felt like the odd one out what made you progress or how did you approach that differently? So when, so when you're in that situation, you have that feeling, that moment where you're like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Mm-hmm. How did you take that fear or that issue and convert it into your approach of how you did? I think for me, I just as a person in general, just whatever I'm doing, whatever task I'm doing, whether it's when I was at school or you know, whatever, whatever test, I always... I always put 110% into whatever I was doing uh, and I put the same amount of effort into business, into the apprentice application, God, I, spent, I did it like an essay when I applied for it, you know? So for me, every time I'm in a room, every time I'm doing something, I always want to be the best at it and I never let anything or anyone or who I am or where I'm from, or I never let that stop me from being the best, so I think definitely... Where's that come from? That's my upbringing, I think. My, my mum and dad, you know, I'm an only child and I'm really, really close to both mum and dad. And my dad especially, is, God, I did all kinds of sports when I was younger. I played football, I played, I did all sorts. I did athletics for a long time. And that taught me a lot about self-belief, about Discipline. getting back up when you, when you lose, you know, when you, when you fail, don't just stop. And I think that's the key in business, isn't it? You'll get Absolutely. knocked down 10 times, you get back up 11. You, you never can be stopped if you are stopped. I say I'm quite brutal, but I'm like, if you allow yourself to be stopped, then maybe it's the wrong industry for you, you know? Because I have never once, I've had hurdle after hurdle, even now, everybody, every business has hurdles, but it never stops me. I never think I can't find the answer, because I, I know I can't. Maybe I don't have them, but somebody will, and I'll be able to find them, so. Uh, that brings me to that resourcefulness, yes. you know, which I think Ross probably talked about. And I think that is the, a great ability somebody that's successful is they're resourceful and when they can't do something they find a way to do it anyway right when there seems like there's no opportunity they create one they find a way to make things happen and and that's how you've got to be you've got to not take no for an answer which it sounds like you don't and i like the winning mentality i think that one of the things that we said is you've got to be successful before you ever are successful in your mind you have to be successful and it sounds to me like you were successful before you were successful. Yeah. And if you think like that and you act like that, then that's what creates the results you want to create. So cool. So we go on the show, yeah. they finally give you the call back, they yes. want you on. But what I want to know is how afraid were you? I was I was petrified, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> I mean the first day, you know, you kinda of just everything's a blur and they don't have to tell you anything and then you just get put into the boardroom. Did anyone try to talk you out of it? No. Oh, well, no one really knew. Like, you weren't allowed to tell anybody. No. So, I, I, so your mum didn't say to you, I don't know if this is a good idea, Sean? No, she was, they were all just like, oh my God, it's an amazing opportunity. But I think there was an element of us thinking, this is going to change our lives for the better, but there'll be a lot that's going to happen along the way as well, that you know, there might be negative things, which they were, you know, being put in, in the limelight, you instantly criticise yeah. every single thing you're doing. So. I think some of the biggest opportunities, though, the reason I asked the question, yeah. Was sometimes the biggest opportunities that you can ever have in your life, people 
try to sort it out. I remember when I, when I did uh, the show that I did recently, the first thing I did when I walked into my marketing department and said, oh, by the way, we're doing this, is going to be wicked. They went, you're having a fucking laugh, are you? They were just like, why do you want to do that? You're mental. You want to swap your house or something? They thought I was crazy. But it turned out to be a massive opportunity. Yeah. But it's, diff it's funny that some people can see the opportunity where others can't. Yeah. So where some people see opportunity, other people see challenge. Do you know um, what? I have had an instance when I was at university, I had a tutor. And I studied fashion design with marketing production. And I we had a placement year in London, <coughs> and obviously being a Leeds girl, I didn't have huge amounts of money and I was like, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to spend the money and I want to I want to set a business up here. And at the time I remember her saying to me, without Moody's London, you'll never be able to be successful in this industry in fashion. And I understand what she was saying, but at the time, that was my biggest driver. It still is even now, like I'm still proving her wrong. So for me, I was like, whenever there's doubt, it actually, I use that as a drive. I love that. You know? Successful people are rebellious by nature. Mm -hmm. You need that. You yeah. need to be a bit of a rebel. When someone tells you you can't do something, you need to be, I'm fucking doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, like, that's it. Right? We need to have that rebellious streak, don't we? Yeah. It's really important. So talk to us about the show. What happens? Why do, we, why do you stand out? What was the challenge? So, I mean, obviously, you, you get on the show, you start doing the tasks, and one thing I would say is, you know, you watch it at home, you see that hour on a Wednesday night, we live it every day or all day. It's full on, it's hardcore, it's really, really difficult. So the first few weeks, you just adjust into to what it is, you know, you're getting up really early, you've got cameras in your face, you've got five minutes to think of names for things, and it's very, very difficult. But one thing I very quickly learned was, about how to handle myself in certain situations. And it was, there was, it was very heated, as you, you know, as you know when you watch it, it's a high moment. And I just said to myself, as long as I just keep level-headed, and as long as, because, you know, You come you're across as very composed. On, yeah, and yeah. I think whether you're on or off camera, you kind of mean watch. So I just kept thinking, as long as I'm fed back as being like level-headed, easy to work with, and, you know, I don't know what Lodger was looking for, but he isn't gonna wanna work with somebody who's a nightmare. So I just kept, that in the back of my mind with everything I did. Uh, and luckily, it worked, it worked all right for me, but I think overall, the, everything is a test in that show. The bits you don't see, it's all a test. And I just kept remember, reminding myself, you know, I didn't want to get too close with anyone. I didn't want to really make Did you not? It's not no. particularly, no. As, as brutal as it sounds, and he did, you know, he was in there for a long time, but I just kept thinking, I'm here to win this. Nice. Under my breath, thinking I'm actually here to win this show. I'm not here to make friends. You know, I've got plenty of friends at home. So it's really, really interesting because Lee and Joseph said the same thing. Joseph, when I knew I'd won, when I turned up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is mental, but he was like, I knew I'd won. I knew before I started, I was winning. No one else was winning. I was there to win. And you said the same thing. But it, you know, when you have that mentality that I come to win, you know, that that's when you typically do. What was the challenging moment? Where do you think you, there must have been a moment where you thought, I've, I've messed this up. Or there was an issue, so I was like, oh my God, I did, I, 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 was there a moment like that? Loads, there was a few of them. <laughs> we, um, I think it was the first task I was PM on, and it was a, we had to design some trainers. And oh, it was a nightmare from the get-go. I wanted to design heels, but I, 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 they ended up being trainers. Um, they were just hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. And all I kept thinking in the back of my mind was, how is this going to be shown on TV? Because there were so many moments where I said things or I did things and I thought, oh, I'm going to crucify me. I'm just getting kicked out. You know, this is a nightmare. But I kept my cool and I think we won. I don't know how, because it was a dreadful trainer. Had the <laughs> <laughs> words, it was dreadful, but we won the challenge, so luckily. But had we Sometimes won? you can win those stars just by not being as awful as the other time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw these, I thought, oh my god. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. I didn't all right, and that one, but uh, during the task, it was so scary because I was thinking, this is me, I'm, I'm going to be embarrassed, my career is ruined. <laughs> but yeah, it was all right, I, I did all right. <laughs> and when you got to the point where you're nearing the end yeah. and you're looking at the other people, was there some other people in there that you thought, I don't know if I'm going to beat them or they're, better, they're good quality? No. You actually felt confident? Yeah, do you know what? I, I did. And I used to have, I used to get phone calls home and I used to ring, you know, I used to ring my boyfriend and I'd be like, I remember about halfway through, I rang him one time and I said, I think I'm going to win this. And he was like, You need to calm down. There's <laughs> <laughs> still a long way to go. And I was like, Honestly, I've pretty much sussed everybody out. 
And it's like in no disrespect, but I thought I can see flaws in them all. And if not in them, in the business plans or in what, you know, because everybody started telling you all the business and you'd be thinking, I'm not playing with anything. And I used to think I've not done the same with them. Like, they don't know that much about me, really. So, yeah, it was. Uh, it's sly, isn't she? Truth, better word. You have to be. It, that was me being ruthless without being nice. how you would envisage it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> ruthless in your approach. So, obviously, after you left the show, yeah. what happens next? You win, you get yeah. the PR, you get the media side of it. Yeah. Explain the impact of PR, media, TV, what it does, how it can transform things for people. It's crazy, really. I mean, on all levels, obviously from a business perspective, you know, it, it was good and bad, but obviously it was all good. Even the bad was good because any PR is, is technically good PR. You know, from just a social media perspective, the level of, of views and engagement, and it's ridiculous. I think in the final, something like nine million, I think, watched the final. So, you know, it's like, you think of it from a business perspective, it's nuts. You couldn't buy that much exposure. Um, the annoying thing for us was back then in the swimwear, it was December. I still use, I mean, crash it anyway. You it? still get there, yeah, and you still get that the, the eyes on the brand. You know, you still get that awareness. You instantly get retailers wanting to stock your product, and that's what we got. We had ASOS, and that was you know pre that we'd never even done retail. It was all made to order. It was small scale. So as soon as we had ASOS knocking on the door, I was like, okay, this is a whole new, this is a whole new area of this business that I don't really know anything about. So instantly, I had to learn I had to get people who knew the answers where I didn't so we were talking final, about that yeah, before you came on the fact that once you build your brand yeah. the opportunities come to you yeah. rather than you going to the opportunities yeah. how much better does it feel to have the opportunities coming to you so much better and you know the other side of it is I think sometimes there's a naivety in you wanting to get everything but you're actually not ready for it either and I think that even now you know we have big deals we have likes of Walmart, Asda, and you know, these have all come at the time when we're ready for them. As a business, we are ready, we are set up, we are, whereas had that happened pre The Apprentice, it wouldn't have worked, you know? So sometimes I think you have to wait for it to come to you because you're ready for it. You know, you can try and want to grow rapidly and you're not actually ready for the rapid growth. It has to happen, you know, in the right time for you and for your business and the structure. Have the right strategy in exactly. place. Yeah.